three, two, one. We here on deck, Demi D in the building, got my guy Clay Steez and J Alpha Prez, the third segment, if you ask me, where we talk that music and movie culture from the late 80s and mid 20s. And right now we on one of uh, hip hop's new champions, we talking about J. Cole, it's the last episode. So are we gonna swing it to, what did you think his most disappointing album was? So we're gonna start with you, Clay, on that one. I mean, I, I don't really have like a, a opinion about this, honestly, because it's What's like, it? I feel like, for me to have an opinion, I have to listen to all of them mm-hmm. and rank all of them and feel all of them. It's like I didn't listen to most of them. So. Got you. Um, yeah. So the ones you heard so far, though, you're happy with those. So that's yeah, the absolutely. That's I, I think the ones that did, from listening to Born Center all the way up to For Your Eyes Only, it's like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> but I guess if it means anything, like I'm a, I'm a. This might sound wild, but I really wasn't impressed with Revenge of the Dreamers Street. I didn't get a chance to check that. I heard a lot of good things about it, though. I think it's, really? it was too much. Okay. I just think, like, and I guess, it, I don't know how you would, like, attach that to him, because I know it's supposed to be a posse cut album, but it's I mean, his it's crew. Like his yeah, it's I mean, his that's how it works. Yeah, it's so it just, it just, it just was, I feel like it was just way too much for me. It's like, I'm not really, I can't really vibe with this. I can't. And that was this yeah. year, right? It came yeah, out, yeah, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. see it's already kind of like, you know, it's not being talked about already, so. Looking back on things, you probably saw my story. <laughs> Outside of that, good work, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm definitely gonna sign my story as well. That is just what that wasn't really. Is that because of the growth in his music, or it's just like <laughs> straight up terrible? He almost lost me with that album. Mm. So it was like if he didn't come back with Born Center, I was gonna be done. Like I'll give him one more album. That was gonna be that, like so. Yeah, I really wasn't feeling it even at the time. I knew he had what he did in him. That's why I was like, I know it's not easy. You know, your first album, your your peers are, are knocking it out the box. You know what I mean? So it's like you got Meek Mill yeah. fucking killing it. <clears throat> Drake on fire. Well, I think Wale already dropped his album, right? Yeah, Wale already was out. Yeah, Wale had. So it's like I get it. So, yeah. but um, yeah, he can, he he bounced back though. But shout out to Cole. Yeah, for me, it might have been, it wasn't disappointing at first. It's just like, when looking at his whole discography, it's like, I right, this is like the weakest for me. So I would just absolutely. like take this out of it. <laughs> nah, absolutely. So it goes to what he's saying to a lot of growth and just, I just feel like maybe more short. It's like, yo, just to jump into another, like, well, Cam. Like, Confessions of Fire was dope, but SDE was Cam. Like, he, that's when he got into his bag, his swag. That's when he was dipset Cam. Right. And it was like, okay. Confessions was dope too, so I think just Cole just got into you know his swag, felt comfortable, and he just ran with it. So we're gonna close it out there. We're gonna jump into the movie portion as we usually do with segment three. We're gonna talk about ATL. This features a uh, you know TI and we have Big Boy with a well, not really small, but not as a big significant part. Right, significant. He's, he's like the antagonist. So uh, we're gonna start with um, just the movie itself. What do you think about the movie Bro, itself? I got that shit on DVD. That should tell you something. That's like, shit, no, right? I still have it. Like, <laughs> it's still in. It's still. I got it. Like, CD and all that. I, I love ATL. I think ATL was probably like one. Of, it's like one of those movies where I don't know. It's just. It felt like it was I like feel for, good, right? a feel good, and it was a, it was for the culture, and it was like it wasn't as monumental as Hustle and Flow, because Hustle and Flow put well. But they ATL was with, fine. They led I don't with care. the big. They led with Hustle and Flow. Led with like. You know, some mega hitters with actors like ATL was more, like you said, more for the culture. The actors they had was, you know, was more <laughs> lesser known. Right. Right. But they, you know, I think it was, like you said, for the culture, definitely. Right. Because I didn't even know uh, Homie who played uh, Tia's little brother. Well, yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah. Evan Ross. I didn't know. Yeah, at the time, he was, he was on the come up, though. Yeah, they gave him like a tan for that movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's just crazy. And then, uh, who, even Big Man who was in it wasn't really. Um, what's Homie's name? Um, you talking about dude that was eight mile. Yeah, yeah, he was in that shit. And then uh, the Homie who played the dude from New York, he he was rap. I'll be back. That, that was his rap. Yeah, name. he does eight mile. Yeah. Oh, he was in eight mile. Yeah, he was in eight mile. That's what he said. That. He was. And that son who, who, who he Jackie who was in a lot of other shit. Oh, of course, that. fucking Jason so, Weaver's in that shit. Yeah, right exactly. Now. So it's like. You know. Yeah, that nice little cast and more introduced Lauren London and everybody. Introduced Lauren got big boy. Uh, also, people commenting on it saying it was like the premise for him being upset with her for being rich is like is like dumb. 
Because he got mad that she was rich. But I don't think he's necessarily mad that she was rich. He ain't mad because she was fronting. I think he's friend. mad that she was fronting. Yeah, he's yeah. mad that she lied about it. Wasn't true. Yeah. You were true. Like, I said, that's a bit. Man, you that shit fire. That shit was fire. That shit was fire. Like, I mean, so, all right, let's jump into the tip, man. What, what, what we talking about? We know he's like 85 playing the like younger brother. I mean, older brother. Shit, yeah, that bro. threw me for a little bit. He's probably like 33. He's trying to play like somebody 30. 18, 19. He's like, hold on. <laughs> but. That's that's movies. Man. That's movies. No, that's but movies. it's but it's, it's the thing. It's like because again, you're talking about somebody who we know as a rapper, as a drug rapper, and now he's actually into the movie bag. It's like yeah. not bad. This it kind of thing. Bad. It yeah. wasn't bad. Like if for it for for that bad. to be his acting debut, it kind of led to a, like a decent a decent career because all the other movies he's been yeah, in. Yeah, he, he had the shit with Chris Brown. He had the shit with Chris Brown. He was in American Gangsters. He was an Ant Man. Like, both of them, he's, right? He's, both yeah. Ant Man. So, so he's he's getting to a bag and led him to a decent career. So I mean, it was a good start. I don't know what's what's the. I mean, what do people really expect when shit like this come? Like it, honestly, it wasn't like subpar. I felt like the acting was was, was, <laughs> was good, good yeah. level. So I don't know what people expect. So we gonna jump into Big Boy. I mean, we, 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 I mean, I, I mean, I felt like Big Boy was kind of Big Boy, just a little more. Yeah, a little more aggressive. A little more aggressive. But I mean, I think he has that in him anyway, but I, I think he sold it. Yeah, I think he was trying to do his best representation of being a drug dealer. You know, like trying to, you know, trying to not be too cheesy or not too cheesy. Atlanta. Like, too, like you, want, you want it to be where it's like, yeah, I'm from, I'm, this is a happening in Atlanta, but this can be, uh, um, it could be like, oh, I, I fuck with that. It could be relatable Somewhere, to everybody yeah, else. Like, yeah. somebody in New York, like, damn, I know a nigga that acts just like that. Somebody in California, Kansas, right. whatever, like, whoever's watching the movie, they're right. like, all right, that's relatable. I know someone who acts just like this. And I think he saw it. Yeah. yeah. He did a good job. I mean, I don't, I mean, as far as the, the whole premise, like you said, with him finding out about being, uh, being rich and shit, I think that, you know, that was kind of corny because you're thinking that, you know, we all in the same type of vibe and lane and you find out, I don't know. Just got money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to feel like you one of us type shit or like what you slumming in or something. So I don't know, but overall, man, I think the movie was a good movie. Like you said, it definitely catapulted him into more shit. Big Boy was swagging it up too. He got a couple of joints himself too. Shout out to the twins. It was fire. Uh, World uh, Star, Star, what's the name? Yeah, 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 yeah. it was fire. What happened to this dude? This Laura? Nah, I, yeah, I think one of them was like dating OT Genesis, and the other one is like Kim, uh, Khloe Kardashian's best friend or some shit like that. Dating obscurity, like yeah, yeah, they dating they, they obscurity. It's more like they hide behind money. <laughs> that. Yeah, that's the way to go though. Shit, but we gonna end it there, man. If you ask me, man, shout out to the fellas. Tune in, hit that red button, subscribe, Demi D. You already know hip hop. Cut. All right, fellas, going right there.